Hey, my name is April Cassidy. I'm the peaceful wife and the peaceful mom, and I'd like to invite you to be peaceful in Christ too. So it's a very common thing for women in our culture today to believe that it's our job to change our men, whether we're dating or once we get married, and we think, I can fix him, or he just needs my love. He just needs a good woman like me. If I just show him enough respect, he'll change. If I just love him enough, he'll change. I can help him. I can make up for all that has happened to him in the past. He's my project. I can make him a better man. The reality is that these things are not true. Jesus alone is the Savior. He is the one who convicts people of sin. He's the one who changes people's thoughts and minds and hearts. He is the one who heals people, not me. If we try to change our husband, our boyfriend, another person, we will make him miserable, we will make ourselves miserable, and we will probably destroy the relationship. Another way of saying that I'm trying to change my husband or fix him is that I'm trying to control him. And the truth is that no healthy man or adult wants to be controlled by somebody else. My husband doesn't need me to be his mom like he's five years old. He doesn't need me to try to make him change his mind about things or to monitor his personal convictions or to make sure he reads his Bible enough times per week. Thankfully, God gives each of us free will. And he doesn't give me my husband's free will. And I can't take my husband's free will. The thing about a healthy relationship, a healthy marriage, is that it's two people who each make their own choices working together. The only person I get to change is myself. And honestly, I can't even do that without God's help. And I can trust God to work in my husband's life. Now, sometimes God does work through people to reach those who are hurting or lost or those who are sinning, but the person is an instrument. God is the one that's the great physician. He is the power source. And if I want to influence my husband for Christ, if I want my husband to value my influence as a wife and my concerns, if I want to address issues in his life, first I've got to deal with the sin, the issues in my own life, And then I can't deal with issues in his life in a sinful way. I can't look at him at the speck in his eye and come at him with a huge beam in my eye of pride or control or disrespect or bitterness or hatred and demand that he let me take the speck out of his eye because you're not reading your Bible enough or you're watching the wrong kinds of TV shows or you're not doing what I think you should do. You need to bow to me. I don't get to do that. I can say things like, hey, it would mean a lot to me if we could avoid these kinds of TV shows. Hey, honey, I'd really like it if we could listen to more Christian music with the kids. That would mean a lot to me. My job is to be close to God for myself. My job is to honor God's word for me and his commands for me. My job is to be filled with the Holy Spirit and not act in the flesh for myself and to not put a stumbling block in my husband's way. And God calls me to show my husband respect, genuine respect, to honor his leadership unless he is asking me to sin. When I try to change my husband, that is not respectful. When I try to make him do what I want and demand that he bow to my will and that he maybe even idolize me and what I think is best, that is not honoring to the Lord. Some women think that if I can just marry this guy, he'll change. If I can just get him to be a dad, then he'll change. And I can make him be a good man and a good husband. No, I am not God. The institution of marriage and parenthood don't change people to make them more like Christ. It takes the Holy Spirit to bring conviction of sin, salvation, a change of mind, a change of heart, and a transformed life that looks more and more like Jesus. I can't drag and force someone to be more like Jesus. Acts 4.12 says, And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. My name isn't there. Jesus' name is the one that we need for salvation. 
Quite honestly, I am a terrible Holy Spirit. If I go into marriage thinking I'm going to wave a magic wand and fix all of my husband's spiritual, emotional, financial, addictive issues, then it's going to be a pretty disappointing situation. Because if I marry someone thinking I can fix this drug addiction, I can fix this porn addiction, I can fix the fact that he doesn't want to go to church, I can fix the fact that he spends 40 hours a week watching TV. If I just love him enough, if I just correct him enough, if I just lecture him and preach at him and nag at him enough, then I can change him. No, this is not true. If I attempt to convict my husband of sin, I just end up shaming him, trying to control him, condemning him, having a critical spirit, humiliating him, discouraging him, and pushing him away, repelling him from myself and even from God. Are there times I may need to confront my husband about sin in a God-honoring way? Yes, but my heart has to be right first. I have a video about this and I'll link it at the end. Jesus is the one who died on the cross to save people from their sin and give them eternal life. I did not. He is God. I am not. It's important that I not get confused about this. And sometimes, although we wouldn't say it, that's how we act. As if I know best and as if everyone should just do what I say because I am so wise. No, God has wisdom. God is so wise. He's the one that changes people. I have a post about this topic you're welcome to check out on my blog, PeacefulWife.com. And you can find me on PeacefulSingleGirl.com. You can also find me on Facebook at The Peaceful Wife blog and on Instagram at Peaceful Wife. I'm glad you stopped by. I hope you will like, comment, share, or subscribe. I'd like to also take a moment to share the ABCs of salvation with anyone who doesn't know Christ as Lord. Today is the day of salvation. None of us know how much more time we have, and so we need to be ready today. There is no reason not to make things right with God today so that we can be prepared for whatever may come. I'm also going to have this linked below. The ABCs of salvation are A, you admit that you are a sinner, that you can't be perfect and holy enough in God's eyes to be right with him on your own. You can't earn salvation or heaven. That if you stood before God on your own, you would stand condemned because you have messed up and have not met God's perfect standards. So you admit you're a sinner, like we all are, and you turn away from your sin toward God. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And then B stands for believe that Jesus, who was God in the flesh, died on your behalf to pay the price for your sin, to give you a way to be in right standing with God, to be forgiven. He lived the perfect life that you couldn't live. He died the death that you deserved. And he rose from the dead in victory over sin, death, and the grave on your and my behalf. Romans 6, 23, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, our Lord. And then C stands for confess that Jesus is your Lord. This means that Jesus is now your master. You live your life for him and his glory rather than for yourself. You say it out loud to others. You live it from now on for the rest of your life. You lay down your will and your desires and follow him, inviting him to direct and use your life for his will and his glory. Romans 10, 9 through 10, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with your heart, you believe and are justified and with your mouth, you confess and are saved. So today, you can ask God to forgive you for your sins. You can ask Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. And you can ask Him to change your life. You can ask Him to heal you and to give you the ability to have eternal life with Him as you trust what Jesus did for you on the cross. You can follow Him as your Lord from today and now on. And you can read the Bible. You can get to know Him. You can pray and ask Him to help you grow as a Christian. If you have any questions or comments, you're welcome to leave them, and I hope that you will choose to have a peaceful day in Christ.